All right, I'm here in the protein bar section of Costco. Now, I wasn't planning on doing a video, but I walked down this protein bar aisle and I see that, holy cow, there is just wall-to-wall -wall protein bars. And a lot of them are just total garbage. So to be completely honest, I wanted to do a video to help shed some light on what you can choose to be the best option for you. Now, truth be told, you really shouldn't be relying on a protein bar to get your protein in. It's more of just a stopgap. But let's go ahead and let's take a look at some of the ingredients in some of these things and really try to find a clear winner so that when you go into Costco, you can at least find the at least top two protein bars that are worthy of taking home for at least a protein emergency. So let's go ahead and let's dive right in. But first, please do hit that red subscribe button and then hit that little bell icon so you never miss our daily videos. All right, where to start? For those of you that are out there that like cereal and still want to be able to have cereal, please do check out Magic Spoon, okay? They're a new supporter of this channel, but they're a product that I've known for a while. These guys are super, super, super cool. Maybe you've seen them floating around. I just wanna throw it out there that they are the bomb when it comes down to a low carb, high protein cereal. Okay, these guys, absolutely no sugar. They're utilizing like a whey protein blend to actually make a protein cereal. And you're gonna get a really good deal on this stuff by using the link that's down below. So I just wanna give them a big shout out because it's totally relevant when I'm talking about breakfast. They've got chocolate, they've got like a fruity flavor, they've got a blueberry flavor, they've got a frosted flavor. You have to check them out. You've probably seen them on Joe Rogan's podcast. All these guys that are reputable within the health industry talk about them. So just because it's bright colored and it looks fun, doesn't mean that it's unhealthy. It's definitely a good way to be able to swap out your breakfast. So highly, highly, highly do legitimately recommend that you try these guys. At least give them a shot. So the link's down below in the description. You can check it out after you watch this video. And thank you, Magic Spoon, for making this channel possible and for helping out so many people with their health. Okay, this first one I'm gonna start with is a Nature Valley, quote, protein bar. Now, Nature Valley is just kind of a regular candy bar type granola bar, but it looks like they slapped the label protein on it to try to capture the attention of, well, people that are looking for a high protein satiating snack. So let's go ahead and let's take a quick look at the ingredients on this one. I'm gonna flip the camera around. Okay, so here's what the label looks like. And then let's go ahead and let's look at the nutrition facts. Okay, roasted peanuts, that's not too bad to start. But soy protein isolate as the second ingredient. That is pure <laughs> adulterated soy. Okay, pure phytoestrogens, which is not exactly something that we want. When you look at overall thyroid effect, when you look at the effect on the body in general, soy is not a good ingredient, especially that high up on the list. Chicory root extract, not the end of the world, but again, this high up on the list, that's going to be a prebiotic fiber that is going to give you a lot of intestinal discomfort. That should not be that high up on the ingredient list. So this one's a little bit sketchy already, but then the big scary one is the vegetable oils down there. Okay, so in terms of the fats that we're adding to the mix here, we've got palm kernel oil, which isn't terrible, but then we've got canola and peanut oil. Definitely not something I wanna have in there. The bulk of the protein here is coming from soy protein isolate, which is just not gonna be good quality stuff and not worth the paper it's really written on. So this one, of course, we also probably have some sugar added to it. Yep, oh, worse than sugar, we have fructose. Okay, remember fructose goes straight to the liver and doesn't really get stored in the muscle. Let me explain something. So here's what happens with fructose when fructose gets in your body. Okay, because fructose can only get metabolized by the liver, you can only process like 30 to 40 grams at a time, which means any excess fructose goes through what's called de novo lipogenesis and gets converted into fat very easily. But it's also very easy for it to contribute to a fatty liver. It's very easy for it to cause all kinds of other effects, especially in the world of uh, viruses. Fructose directly feeds a virus, so we have to be really careful with that kind of stuff just in general when we're worried about health. So this one's a no-go. Let's move on to the next. Frankly, a lot of these aren't even protein bars, so I don't really want to waste the time. These are just granola bars or peanut bars, fruit and nut bars. These grain-free bars are kind of cool, but they're not a protein bar, once again. Um, in the world of bars, though, they're not that bad. I just know for a fact, almonds, pecans, maple syrup, organic honey. Okay, we still have fructose coming from honey and maple syrup, so you have to be careful with that. It's still fructose, still gonna go through that same de novo lipogenesis thing, but at least it's clean ingredients. Not something I would really feed my family, but worst case scenario, it's probably one of the cleaner ones. Now this next one is one that I just stumbled across. Now I haven't tasted it or anything, so I can't really attest to, to that. Um, price, it seems very expensive. It's called a ratio bar and $17.99 for 16 of them. That's, I mean, not the end of the world. It's still pretty cheap, but compared to like the Nature Valley bars, right? But those are garbage. So let's take a look at what's in this one. I actually was pretty pleased with the ingredients. Um, I'll spin the camera around and then I'll flip it back and explain some stuff in a minute. So the label looks like this. Okay, let's go ahead and ingredients here. We got almonds, pumpkin seeds, soy protein isolate, which is definitely not something we want as far as the protein goes, uh, coconut oil, erythritol, 
whey protein isolate, chicory root extract. Okay, so you remember how we talked about chicory root extract? This is further on down the list, okay, which I appreciate. That means it has less of the actual binding fiber that's going to give it sort of the texture, uh, but it's further down the list, meaning they at least prioritize that. I like that it's uh, stevia extract. That's gonna be really solid. I like that it's erythritol. That's better than sugar. Okay, the problem is, once again, soy protein isolate, all right? We have a big problem there. We don't wanna use that. Now, let me explain something with whey protein isolate, which I was pleased to see. When you're looking for a whey protein, you want whey protein isolate, not concentrate. It means they've taken the protein and they've isolated, excuse me, they've taken the whey and they've isolated the protein out of it. So that means you don't have any of the lactose, you don't have any of the milk solids, you just have pure protein. Now with soy, you end up with a lot of the, you know, soy isoflavones, you end up with a lot of the phytoestrogens and everything like that. So different story. What's funny is they go through the effort of having a high quality whey protein isolate, but they have a high, uh, or excuse me, a low quality soy protein isolates. It doesn't make any sense. They go through, might as well just use whey protein concentrate and just use the cruddy stuff. Point is, if it wasn't for the soy protein isolate in that ratio bar, I absolutely would use that. I think it's a really clean one and I think it's low sugar. So it's not the end of the world. It's better than some of the other ones, but definitely doesn't make the top two. This is one that people love all the time. It's not even a protein bar, it's a protein cookie. Now they've done an amazing job of marketing, but we have to be real here for just a second because it's not a bar and it's still at the end of the day, just a cookie. Fun fact, as I was filming this, someone comes up to me and says, oh my gosh, I follow you, this is awesome. And she's holding one of these and she says, is this good or should I put it down? I said, put it down. <laughs> I could already tell her immediately. So we're gonna explain some stuff in here, but it's actually quite simple. The Linny and Larry's cookies are not good to go, but let's take a look at the ingredients just for the heck of it. Bad price, $13.99. I mean, price-wise, here's what we're looking at label. And, okay, first ingredient, enriched wheat flour. Okay. Every time you have gluten or wheat, you are triggering the release of a protein called zonulin within your body. Zonulin causes a cross-reaction that triggers what's called a leaky gut. This leaky gut makes it so that what are called lipopolysaccharides, which are basically things that coat your bacteria, can leach into your bloodstream, compromising your immune system and making you ultimately feel sick. Okay, it doesn't matter if you have a gluten allergy or not. Even those that are not gluten intolerant will have an issue when it comes down to wheat, whether they feel it or not from an inflammatory sense. We have simply overconsumed it. Now, additionally, what's in there? Chicory root fiber as the second ingredient, okay? Bloat city, once again, we don't like to go to bloat city. Look at the protein blend. The lowest quality protein blend I've seen. Sorry, I'm talking quiet so I don't be rude. Wheat gluten as a protein, pea protein, which is okay, but then rice protein. Not even using whey, not even using anything. They're trying to be able to call it I don't even know, are they going for plant-based? I don't know what they're going for here. Point is, very low quality stuff. And then invert sugar, vegetable glycerin, which isn't that bad, cane sugar, peanuts, palm fruit oil. This stuff is garbage, pure garbage. Honestly, I would barely even consider that remotely healthy junk food. And I'm not trying to bag on them. I feel like their mission was good in the beginning, but marketing just caught on. Anyhow, that's not worth, again, the cardboard that it's on. Next one is another popular one, the RX bar. Good clean bar, but not really a protein bar once again, more so just a snack bar. So let's take a look at what's inside this one. Again, I actually like the company as a whole. I like what they've done with almond butters. I like what they've done with some of the nut butters. Um, they obviously got their start more so with the bars. So let's take a look at what's in them. Here's again what the box looks like, okay? So $19.99 for 16. Again, not a bad price, but let's see what's in Clean ingredients, I do like that. Dates, egg whites, cashews, almonds, chocolate, cocoa, natural flavors, sea salt. We have to be careful with natural flavors. I don't say avoid natural flavors, I'm just saying use caution. The thing with natural flavors is there's no real regulation on them. Okay, there's 150 different ultimately chemical compounds that can go into natural flavors known as what are called incidental additives. So organic natural flavors is what you wanna aim for or a company that you know and trust, okay? RX Bar is pretty clean, so I'm not too worried about them because I know they have a good reputation. So that part doesn't bother me. But the protein is coming from a little bit of egg white, which is straight albumin, which isn't the highest quality protein in my opinion, simply because it can trigger an inflammatory reaction. Uh, let me explain what that means. So the dates that are in an RX bar are still pure fructose. Okay, so we gotta be careful with that. But then what I was talking about was with the egg whites. So albumin, it's a complete protein. It's a good protein, but the problem is you have to remember that's essentially the placenta for the yolk, right? So it's full of different immunoglobulins, different things that are there to support the immune system of, well, growing a chicken. That can trigger an inflammatory response in humans. In fact, if you look at like the AIP, autoimmune paleo protocols, where they actually remove inflammatory foods, eggs are one of the first thing they remove. However, it's not the yolks that are bad. It's the whites that can be bad, can be bad. 
you just have to introduce them and make sure you don't get flush, make sure you don't feel bloated. Personally, I feel bloated when I have egg whites, but I eat a ton of egg yolks. Anyway, just fun fact. Okay, this is the big one. This is the one that people ask about all the time. So I would be doing a disservice if I didn't talk about it. The good old Kirkland protein bars. People talk about how they taste really good. I had one for the first time about three or four months ago. Surprisingly good taste, but let's break down the ingredients. I'm actually pleasantly surprised with this. And price-wise, pretty darn solid. Check this out. Okay, you get 20 of them for 18 bucks. So less than a dollar a pop. Um, different flavors, but anyhow. I talked about this in another video, but check out the ingredients in this. Surprisingly not bad. Okay, protein blend, milk protein isolate. Remember, we want isolate, isolating the protein. Then we have whey protein isolate. Once again, isolating the protein from the whey. Dietary fiber from tapioca starch. Okay, so you're not using chicory root. Tapioca is a little bit better. You just don't want to overdo tapioca because what we're finding right now is that people are starting to become sensitive to tapioca because of the overconsumption of it in a much similar way to wheat. We developed gluten intolerances later on in our uh, generations because we've been consuming so much wheat since the 1950s with the fortification and also trying to reduce fat and adding more wheat in. We're seeing the same thing with tapioca. So just be careful there. Um, erythritol, peanut flour, could be inflammatory. Natural flavors, again, questionable. Cocoa powder, uh, cocoa powder butter, excuse me. Cocoa processed with alkali, which just means that it's gonna have a higher potassium content. Sea salt, sunflower lecithin, not a big deal somewhat of an omega-6, but again, this is not something you're trying to eat as a health food. Uh, unsweetened chocolate, so they're not using sweetened chocolate with sugar in it, which is great. And then we have stevia glycosides, which is just straight up pure stevia. Okay, that is clean in the world of a protein bar. Not gonna lie. Okay, now, what scares me a little bit, 23 grams of carbs, 15 of which are from fiber, four of which are from erythritol. That fiber is gonna send you to, well, you know it, bloat city, hashtag bloat city. I will say though, in the world of protein bars, it's pretty clean. The only thing I would have wanted to really see changed in there is instead of milk protein isolate, just left it with whey protein isolate, but it probably would have made it less of a creamy taste and they don't really want that. So I totally get it, but that's a good price and that would definitely make the list. So I highly recommend that one in the world of Costco protein bars. Oh, one more thing to add to that. Don't eat more than one or you will definitely be in bloat city. I promise you that. Making this a little quick here. Next one, Robert Irvine's Fit Crunch. Okay, these are the bright yellow ones that you can't miss. Um, I know from seeing these in other stores, they're not the cleanest. Robert Irvine should definitely stick to being on the Food Network because he's got a great personality on TV, but I'm not sure if he's a good formulator. Let's take a look at this. Well, maybe I'll eat my words. This is what it looks like. Um, 18 count, still a little under a buck. Protein blend. All right. Whey hey, I will say, at least he starts with whey protein isolate, not milk protein isolate. But then we got whey protein concentrate. Um, okay, that already kind of nullifies it. And then, ooh, soy protein isolate. Dang it, vegetable glycerin, vegetable oils, palm and palm kernel. That's not the end of the world. He could be using canola. He's using palm and palm kernel oil so he doesn't have to use anything hydrogenated, which is great, but sugar. Then sorbitol, which is a sugar alcohol, gelatin, bovine gelatin, brown rice flour, maltitol. Oh, talk about bloat city. That's again, that's a sugar alcohol that does not digest. So basically what it does, it causes something called passive diffusion. Okay, it draws water into the gut. Let me explain this. It draws water into the colon and it ferments. It essentially rots in your gut, but it doesn't digest. So they can call it something that doesn't affect your blood sugar. I've seen enough. That ingredient list was really long. That ingredient list was really dirty. That one definitely does not make the gut. Another one that comes up in question all the time is pure protein. Uh, I'll save you a lot of time and headache and just flip the camera around and get right to it. But I think you're starting to get the gist of what the common ingredients in a lot of these just inexpensive protein bars are. 29, a little bit under a buck once again. Oh, here we go. Uh, milk protein isolate, not the end of the world. Whey protein isolate, not the, up. Uh, then it goes to concentrate. Hydrolyzed collagen. So they're getting their protein from a little bit of collagen. But once again, we've got that maltitol in there. Fractionated palm kernel oil. Sugar, again, milk, unsweetened chocolate. And, oh my gosh. Okay, so if you're going to put sugar in it, you already have sugar and soy less than, but you're gonna put sucralose in it too? That doesn't make any sense. Let's give you the worst of both worlds. Let's give you sugar, but let's also kill your gut microbiome with sucralose. That's a little sketchy. Not make the cut, unfortunately. Obviously the Kirkland bars were designed to kind of uh, take them out. And I would definitely recommend that one. So there's an interesting study that found that in human subjects, if they had any kind of artificial sweetener, 
it would make them glucose intolerant, okay? And then when they took their gut bacteria after becoming glucose intolerant and transferred it into mice, the mice became glucose intolerant. What that means is artificial sweeteners actually have an effect on our gut microbiome, which has an effect on our sugar and glucose metabolism. Meaning, if you eat a bunch of artificial sweeteners, you change your gut microbiome. And sucralose has been shown in other studies to literally kill off up to 50% of your gut bacteria. That is scary, scary stuff. So when I get upset about the fact that it already has sugar, we've already done the damage with sugar, okay? Why do we also have to do damage with sucralose? It's like one or the other, pick your poison. Sugar's gonna cause a bunch of metabolic distress. Sucralose is gonna cause a bunch of digestive and gut biome distress. Why have both? So that definitely, that's probably one of the worst ones here to say, hate to say it. Okay, we're down to almost the last one here. This one is one called Smart for Life, which is a relatively new one. Um, let's take a look at the price once again. They're all about the same, but you know, let's see. This is a new one, so I haven't really investigated it. Let's see, that's what the label looks like. Collagen infused, gluten-free. Okay, that's a plus. $15.99 for 18 of them. Whoa, that's a lot of ingredients. Okay, so let's take just one of them. Protein blend, soy protein nuggets. Uh, okay, which contains soy protein, tapioca starch, and salt. Then milk protein, not even milk protein, isolate. So you're gonna, you're gonna use soy protein as the protein source. Might as well try to make it a vegan bar, but nope, then they go straight to milk protein. But again, not even milk protein isolate, just straight milk protein. Collagen coming from egg and kosher bovine. Okay, that's a plus. Um, tapioca syrup, soluble corn fiber. Okay, SCF is dangerous stuff. Soluble corn fiber ferments in the gut. The soluble corn fiber is derived from heavy duty GMO corn starch. Okay, bad, bad, bad news. Then canola oil, oh man. So omega-6 bomb, vegetable glycerin, milk chocolate coating, which has erythritol, malt. Again, here's what I don't understand. You're using erythritol, which is a pretty clean sugar alcohol, and then you also use maltitol, but then you also use sugar and sustainable palm. I don't understand it. The world of processed foods is so sketchy. Like there's so much just nasty stuff that they throw in things just to increase shelf life. And the reality is if they just went a little bit cleaner, they could probably sell a little bit more. To be honest, <laughs> If people start educating themselves, which they are, we can make better decisions on this stuff. Now, there's only one more that I want to show you, and then we'll have our two clear winners. The Go Macro Bar. But this isn't even a protein bar, to be completely honest. Okay, it's kind of another, let's see. Here's what I like about it. It's organic ingredients. It is vegan. It's clean. Organic brown rice syrup, uh, organic almond butter, organic protein blend, which is uh, sprouted pr brown rice protein, um, organic pea protein, very clean, organic puffed rice, organic fair trade, chocolate chips, Actually, a very clean bar. To be completely honest, when it comes down to it, this one is one that I would recommend. It's just not the highest protein. Okay, so we have protein here. Let's see, only 11 grams of protein, but 36 grams of carbs. Okay, and again, the sugar is gonna be coming from brown rice syrup, which is not going to be the best solution here for us. So technically, yes, it's a protein bar, but since they're using the brown rice syrup, that's a, again, it's a syrup, a sugar that's being directly derived from a brown rice, which is going to make it a little bit better than say, I don't know, like a corn fiber or corn syrup or something like that. And at least it's organic. So at least it's not gonna be as bad. So that probably does make the cut, at least for the best plant-based options. So the Go Macro Bar for the best plant-based non-keto bar. But the cleanest ones otherwise are gonna be these two. I'll probably say the Ratio Bar, even though it does have some soy in it, not the end of the world. Okay, so the Ratio Bar does make the cut, but I haven't tasted it. Now, I, it does say keto-friendly, which, I don't really buy that. And sugar, alcohol, yeah, not really. Kind of keto friendly. It calls itself a protein bar, but not a protein bar. Basically a knockoff of a kind bar, so technically not a protein bar. Also not a protein bar, just so that you know, okay. Protein cookie, disguised, in disguise. RX bar, not really a protein bar, but at least clean. Go macro bar, gonna be the cleanest plant-based option, not keto. We've got the Kind Bar Minis, which again are not a protein bar. And then we've got Z Bars, not a protein bar. Cliff Bars, not a protein bar. And then the Cliff Builders, I don't even want to touch them to be honest, I already know. At least they are gluten-free and low glycemic, that's a plus, but they don't make the cut. So we had those Ratio Bars, and then we have the Kirkland Bars. Okay, these are gonna be the two that you should choose when it comes down to it, plain and simple. Obviously I could go into a lot more depth, but I want to be respectful of everybody's time. So I do wanna encourage everyone to keep watching my channel, but also if you're interested in a video that I did on protein powders at Costco, I'll link out to it below and YouTube will probably recommend it. But I highly recommend that one because I break down a lot more the detail of what goes into a protein powder, not just a protein bar. Anyhow, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And don't forget 
to turn on that bell to never ever miss a daily video. I'll see you tomorrow.